One alternate way that we can design a linked list is to try to avoid some of the problems that we've had to prevent around where nulls were stored in the head or the tail or were the previous or the next to something. The way that we can sometimes avoid this is by creating a sentinel list. This is a regular linked list in every other way, except for the head node and the tail node will always be two actual node objects with no real data stored in them. We'll always maintain that same head and tail node pointing to the real data of the list in the middle, in between them, so that the first real data in a sentinel list will be the head's next node's data, and the last real data in a sentinel node list will be the tail sentinel node's previous's data. That way, we never have to worry about when the list is empty, having the head being null or the tail being null. We never have to worry about changing around the head or the tail when those might be null. This will simplify some of our basic methods that we've been looking at, adding at the head, adding at the tail, removing from the head, removing from the tail. It conceptually can be a little more challenging but it especially makes it easier to, more, to do more general methods like removing from any index or location within the list. It allows us to bypass some of those special cases that we checked for before, where the head might be null or the tail might be null or the previous of something might be null. So one thing that's going to be required for a sentinel list, however, that we didn't necessarily have to do before is a constructor because we have to set up those head and tail sentinel nodes. So the head will be some new actual node with fake data in it. So we can set the head's data to be something that's absurd for our data type, a null for something that's allowed to store nulls. Here I'm going to set them to negative one because let's assume our list would never store negative numbers. Likewise, we'll set the tail to be some other new node with fake data in it as well. We'll never, if we're doing things right, access the data of the head or the tail and try to use it as real data. The other thing that we have to make sure of when we create the list is that the head points forward to the tail and the tail points backward to the head. This allows us to add things into the list from an empty list where we've already set up a correct relationship between the head and the tail. They point to each other. Once we add nodes, the head will point forward to those real data nodes and the tail will point backward to those real data nodes. So our sentinel list is set up correctly now to be an empty list with some fake data at the head and some fake data at the tail that if we write our other methods correctly, we will always ignore. You'll remember that I mentioned to you that the first real data from a sentinel list is in the node that follows the head sentinel. So we will take the head sentinel, we'll look at the next thing, and we'll get its data to return the heads, the actual head for our user, the actual first data. Because it comes after the head sentinel. Likewise for the tail, we'll return whatever node is before the tail, and that will be the last real data because it came before the tail sentinel. It's worth noting that we've had naive approaches a lot of the time to our get head and get tail in all of the implementations, and this one's a little naive too, because if the list was empty, we would ask for head next, which would be the tail sentinel, and we really should not be giving its data back. We'll get back junk data, and that might indicate to our users that they've tried to access the head from an empty list. 
And likewise, we would do the same from the tail if the list was empty. We would tail previous would give us the head, sentinel, which would have fake data in it. We should be checking in all of our get heads and get tails for whether the list is empty and then either returning something that indicates that to the user or better yet, throwing an exception, raising an error of some sort. We didn't do it in any of our other implementations, which would have led to null pointer exceptions. At least here, our users would not get null pointers. They would get some data that might indicate to them that they've done something wrong. We could write a better implementation another time. We won't for right now. So right now, all we're going to do is get what should be the first real data, the thing that follows the head, grab the data from it. To add to the head, we actually don't need any special cases for an empty list, and I'll show you why. We create a new node, just like before. And we'll set its data to the correct data that we are getting as a parameter there. And then instead of having to check for whether heads are null and all of these things, we know the head will not be null. We know the tail will not be null. And therefore, we know that head next will never be null. In an empty list, head next will be the tail sentinel. And in a non-empty list, head next will be the real dated node that follows the empty, that follows the head sentinel. So our inclination again might be to set the first real node, head next, to be this new node that we've created there. However, we can't do that first. So what this would do is add as the first real data because it follows the head sentinel. That's what we want to do in the end. Before we can do that, we need to do a few different things. First off, the head sentinel should always point forward to the first real data. Excuse me. The head sentinel should always be pointed back to by the first real data. So we should set ends previous to be the head sentinel. We also want to take whatever node follows the head and make it point back, make its previous point to our new node that we've created. So this should be the first real data, or in an empty list, this will be the tail. We make it point backwards to n, our new node that we've created. We also need to make n point forward to what used to be the first real data, or what is the tail sentinel if the list is empty. This should set up our list so that the head sentinel now points to our new node. Our new node points to the old first real data, the old sort of head value. And our old sort of head value, our old first real data node, points to n. And n points back to the head sentinel. We don't need special cases. We don't need to check a million things. It sets it all up for us because no one will be null here. We'll never reach nulls reasonably in the way we're setting this up. We'll need to do much the same for the tail. So again, the tail's previous is where real data should live. So the last thing that we would want to do is to set the tail's previous to be n, our new node. That would add it as the last real data. before the tail sentinel. But before we can do that, we're going to need to set some things to point to each other first. So n will need to point forward to the tail sentinel. And then the data that used to follow the tail will need to point to n as well. So tails previous's next should point to n so that that old last data node points forward to n. We also want n to point backwards 
to that last dated node that we used to have there, tail previous. So this is pretty parallel to what we have up here in the head. A few of them have gotten swapped around a little bit, so I'll move them so that they match a little better. We have n pointing correctly to whatever node came before the tail. We have whatever node came before the tail pointing forward to n. And we have n pointing to the tail sentinel, and we have the tail sentinel pointing to n. So a few more statements here total, but no checking and worrying about what if some nulls are in there. Then we can work on our two strings so that we're able to print out all the real data from our sentinel list without printing out the fake data from the sentinels themselves. So our loop will look a, just a little bit different than before. We'll create that current node, but instead of setting it to the head, which would be a sentinel, and we want to mostly ignore the sentinels when we're reporting things to users, we set it to the heads next. We should set it to the first real data. Even in an empty list, we'll be fine here because our stopping condition will be we stop if current equals the tail. We keep going so long as current is not equal to the tail. Once it reaches the tail, we're at fake data. So we stop when we reach the tail sentinel and don't print out or don't return the contents of the tail sentinel. So it will mostly skip over the head sentinel and the tail sentinel this way. Our return value gets the current node's data added to it plus the space and we move current forward in much the same way that we did before. Now we can run our code and test it. As we run it, we see the same results that we had expected from our other linked lists. We add 7 as the head, then we add 12, which moves 7 to be the second item. We add 5 at the head, which means that it should point to 12 and 12 should point to 7. And then we add 10 at the tail. That gives us this list with 5, 12, 7, and 10. And we're able to point, print out only those values because we skip over the head sentinel and we stop if we reach the tail sentinel. We can now think about removing things. So as we remove things from a sentinel-based list, the main trick is that we never want to remove the head or tail sentinels themselves. So we need a method to remove the head and a method to remove the tail. These again will not need a bunch of special cases for if the list is almost empty or things like that. The only special case that we really need is if the list actually is empty, we want to just return. We'll do nothing. So if head ever equals tail, we do nothing because, I'm sorry, if head next equals tail, because remember, an empty sentinel list is where the head points to the tail and the tail points to the head and nothing is in between them. So if the head points next to the tail, our list is empty, we do nothing. If it is not empty, we don't need special cases. We don't ever need to change the head or them ta the tail themselves. So our inclination, again, would be to move head next to point to whatever followed that current first real data. Remember that head next should always point to what should be our first real data. So we're going to take that pointer and we're going to move it one forward from there, essentially. This looks a little confusing sometimes, but it's really just shifting forward to the second real data, making that become the first now. But because we have these previouses and things like that, we're going to need to, need to do a little more work on this. So we need to take that thing that we made the heads next, meaning what is now the first real data, 
and change its previous to skip past the data that it had. In other words, we need to change it not to be null, like we would have done in a non-sentinel list, but rather we need to make it no longer point to the old first data, the old first data node there, the old sort of head for our old terminology. So it points to the sentinel instead now, and that bypasses the old one. We can do the same stuff here with removing the tail. Again, it might make you uncomfortable to have it in this format. So you could say if tails previous equals the head. If you've maintained your list correctly, then both should be equivalent statements. You should be pointing the head to the tail and the tail to the head whenever the list is empty. So let's make sure that we do that we would want to make the tails previous be whatever came before that last real data. So tail previous previous, making the tail sentinel point back one further than it did before. And then that thing that we have now made the last real data, we need it to no longer point to what used to be right after it, what used to be our last real data. And so we make the next of that new last real data node be the tail sentinel. And once we've done that, we can uncomment our tests to test removing, and we can run. As we can see now, we removed the head that was 5, removed the tail that was 10, and we're left with only the 12 and 7 that were in the middle there. And we don't get our sentinel values showing up in the printouts. We also presumably don't get our sentinels ever being removed from the list while we're doing those other operations. So Adding sentinels to our list does make it sometimes a little more conceptually confusing, having to remember that the last real data is at tail previous and that the first real data is at head next. But it allows us to avoid a lot of different special cases that we would have had to check, such as if the list was already empty, there would be nulls at the head and the tail, and that people's different nodes previouses or nexts might point to null as well. So sentinels can help to simplify your code, though they may make the processes a little more conceptually confusing for beginners to understand.